Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial, the king of machine tools. It's called the king for a reason. Either you got one of these or you want one of these. Personally, I would much rather have a Bridgeport milling machine, a knee mill of any kind, because you can do turning, small turning, in the quill here, same as you can do milling in the lathe. So king of machine tools, I would get a mill before a lathe. However, the machine tool that you will most likely purchase first is one of these craptacular cheapo offshore drill presses. That's a crappy cryobi. Works just fine. I never use the thing because I got a milling machine. But, but, we're going to turn this crappy drill press into an even crappier milling machine. To the casual observer, a milling machine is very similar to a drill press. It's got a spin them a thing that you put bits into, it spin them a things and you press down, makes holes. However, there is a huge difference in the arrangement. So this is a typical arrangement. This is what came out of this drill press, this little cryobi. This is a Morris taper shank and a Jacobs chuck. A universal chuck holds it in the center. It doesn't really hold it in the center. It sort of holds it kind of half-ass in the center. And when you're milling, when you're cutting on the side, you need it pretty much dead nuts on. Also, because this is a drill press, you're always forcing, your feed is always down. You're forcing down. That jams this wedge into the socket. That prevents it from falling out. Occasionally these do fall out, but mainly when you've got a wobbling drill bit. So, when you have a cutter like this, that's got radial force, axial, yeah, radial force. It's actually pushing sidewards on it and it disengages this Morris taper so it falls out. That's why Jacob's chuck and Morris taper are no good for milling. What is good for milling is a solid hole with a set screw and then a drawbar. So this is R8 for the for the Bridgeport milling machine and this is threaded 7 16 uh, 26 I believe that jams it up and holds it up a drawbar is, is a bolt it draws it up in and then squeezes down this collet wedges itself in there so when you apply loads radially it doesn't fall out so that's the problem that we need to overcome is this Morris taper now on the drill press the quill is actually a rack and pinion gear set so we need to take that out, and in order to do that, we just take off the clock sprawing here from this side, and then we'll pull the pinion out, and this guy will fall. Just like that. The other thing we're gonna need for a milling machine is an XY work table. So this has two axes square to each other that are on threaded rods, and advance or retract as we turn the threaded rod. Very rigid setup. We need this and it's very convenient in order to mill out pockets or square areas or flatten things out perfectly. This I ordered from Mao's Poundland, the Big Rock Candy Mountain, came uh, within a week, paid 20 bucks shipping, and 12 freedom dollars for the entire unit. All aluminium, powder coated. <laughs> for the price, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's reasonably rigid. It does have some weeble wobble in it. Nothing we can't overcome. Here's the quill assembly with the rack. We can see the input spline shaft here, six splines, big bearing on the bottom end. That's what we're looking for. 6204, that's probably 19, probably twice that, 50. I bet you this bearing can take 3,000 pounds uh, dynamic loading. 3,000, I, I bet you, say 2,500 conservatively. Plenty skookum for what we need. Now, if we look here, there we go. That's where the tang engages for the Morris taper. Now, how are we going to get a Morris taper tool to stay in there? under axial loading, radial loading. Fuck! I have a Morris Taper ER Collet set coming. ER Collet is just a, a machine collet. 
that's got a, a spring of a thawing and a nut and it's a proper machining thing however uh, I don't have it here right now so I looked through the junk drawer and sure enough we have a Chinesium 2 to J3 J3 is the Jacob Ch Chuck 3 that's a different taper uh, this is Morris taper it's even got the tang and of course luckily because it's Chinesium it's cheese grade soft so I'm gonna go ahead in the lathe and clean this up what for putting an end mill in there then we'll cut the tang off or will we maybe we won't cut the tang off we'll put this in the freezer heat this up clean it all put it in the freezer heat this up jam this in there give her a whack let it sit good bad and different these are the tools that we got what for the job okay Halifax England this beautiful Boxford lathe, the tailstock has a Morris Taper 2. Just so happens, this is Morris Taper 2. So, we put it in there, that way we know it's all centered up. Normally, I would use a centering drill. I don't need to in this case, because it already has a centering little pip in there, or spigot, or nub, whatever you want to call it. 15 64ths, which is the closest to Carter inch that we can get. And then, holes are not accurate. Drilled holes, drilling, is not accurate because you got a tool thing and a weeble wobbles and so forth. So what you got to do is come in after with a properly sized reamer. I am hoping that this is close enough. It's 20 thou off, so that is a lot of material for a reamer to take, but we're going to try. This here is the part that could totally fuck us. And yes, there are machinists gnashing their teeth and crying at this very moment because this three jaw universal chuck is not accurate. There's going to be at least a couple thou run out. However, you got to piss with the cock you got. I do not have a collet uh, chuck on. I don't. I don't have a lathe with a collet chuck. I don't have a super accurate lathe. This is just a funsies. A good funzy style lathe. Now the battle cry, which once uttered will put a fuck right in your whole week. It appears to be working. So we'll keep going until this cracks right half and two, spoils our part and ruins our lathe. need some retention but we're gonna put a grub screw in here only problem is drilling on around is not gonna get us anywhere it's gonna fuck right off on us and so we have to mill this flat the problem is we're on two tapers how are we gonna hold it in the vise to mill it you know to get it dead nuts on flat well as it happens my rotary table here the center hole is Morris taper two. a kiss and just the tip. Carbide likes rigid setup, so that could have been super ugly but dodge the bullet yet again young children and fools am i right yeah this is all done like store bought i had to re-ream the hole on account of the burr that this this made however what we're going to do now is differentially heat the female socket and keep this room temperature i could cool this down but it's fairly cool in the shop already and I don't have any frizzy freeze, uh, you know, that uh, duster, feather duster stuff. That would take it down to around 40 degrees C. But we're not going to do that. What's going to happen is this is the way that they keep railroad wheels on the axles. 
is there's a taper on the end and they press them on and there's an interference fit that's all that keeps them on so hopefully we differentially heat this it's going to expand if we heat it we jam this in we let it cool I don't want to overheat the bearings mind you 300 Fahrenheit is no big deal probably hotter than we need and in she goes oh it's good to have the proper tools around searching for the thing jam that in when the temperatures normalize that socket's gonna squeeze in on the mail and get in there so tight you'll never get the fucker out here's hoping anyway got the XY bolted singing right down tight got the Gibbs tightened up actually don't say this too loud but uh, it's tighter than the bridge board now got the machinist vice piece of Teflon big expensive piece of Teflon I didn't reinstall the watch spring on the quill on account of it going spring and spring and I didn't feel like messing with it because milling okay here's blood in your eye corn duct holy fuck <laughs> what are you gonna do? Okay, let's give her a try. Good from far, but far from good. About what you'd expect. I check to see where the run out is, if it's actually in the quill or in the tool. Yeah, I got about three thou there. Now we got her indicated down as far as she'll suffer without hitting the flutes. And yeah, just about ready for my tool making debut in Guangzhou. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can always fall back on that. You win this round, this old Tony. Every home shop machinist from Tubal Kane on down is pissing their sides laughing. Classic Dunning Kruger. I I didn't think it would be that that bad, that far off, but clearly the tailstock on the lathe is uh needs a bit of an adjustamente and probably the wrong cock for the job. In any case, nothing like a good dose of humility to make you realize that maybe we should have just gone with the uh, Jacob's Chuck in the first place instead of dicking around with it. What are the odds of that coming out? Slim to nil. Here's a 3-4 uh, Morris Taper wedge. Try and jam that out. but She's in there good now. There we go. I would say that was in there pretty fucking good. Look at the pattern on that. So that's the inside, real chowdery on the inside of that socket, as you can see.
Well, if I didn't have a milling machine, I'd say that's pretty fun. $30 e-dues, quarter inch end mill. That's a win in my book. Fuck yeah, I can't wait till we get the proper call it. That's a, I mean, that's a fun little toy, essentially. It'd be good for doing slots in, in thin gauge material. You know, it's tough to drill when you want to slot something out instead of just a, a drill. Also doing enclosures, zinc, zinc uh, die cast enclosures for electronics and whatnot. Plastic, even brass. So if it can do brass, it'll do aluminum. Once we get to call it though, look out. Hey, thanks for watching. Sticking with me, I appreciate it. Keep your dick in advice.